Hey guys, so what am I working on now? Well, I got a Chevy Express van here, and uh, customer's complaint is it's got no brakes. But he said it's got it's full of fluid and it's not losing fluid. Let's find out. All right, so here it is. It's a regular work van. He's a painter, obviously. Uh, let's see. Of course, it's jammed in a parking spot here. Brake light on. Yes, it does. Brake pedal was down. Yeah, there is nothing there. See that? This thing must be Hydro Boost. All right. So, what's the first thing you do in a situation like that? Well. I want to move it out so I'm not jammed in between these cars here. Actually, no, nah, you know what? I'm going to just move it over a little bit. Hang on a second. Let me do that. Let me maneuver this thing. So it does have some brakes. I mean, they're absolutely minimal, though. It's, it's pretty much on the floor. It feels like it lost a circuit. And I could definitely hear the left rear. You hear that noise? That's the left rear hang holding when I'm holding the brakes. So it feels like I got nothing in the front, but let's check the fluid level first and let's go from there. Just roll the window down. It's hot today, man. Woo! All right. Let's go out and under the hood. Sounds like a V6. It feels like it's got hydro boost. It's a V6, and what is... I smell brake fluid. All right, hang on a second. Let me prop the hood. All right, so right off the bat, yeah, it's full of fluid. But what's all of this wetness down here? Is it just moisture? No, that's, that feels like brake fluid. I'm smelling it. It smells like brake fluid, unless it just spilled it. But this, see how this is rubbing up against... That I'd be willing to bet this is what's leaking. You see how it's can you see it's wet right there? See the wetness? I'd be willing to bet that this line has rubbed through. It's all wet right there. See it? Let me get somebody to pump the brake down. I'd be willing to bet that's what that's what's going on. It might be aerated to the point that it's actually not pumping any fluid out right now. But let's uh let's go get somebody to help me with this. <laughs> So with the assistance of Mr. Mo, <laughs> Alright, do me a favor, press the pedal. Pump it up. Yeah, did you see that little squirt? Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Alright. So there's our brake fluid leak. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to replace those lines. I'm gonna recommend both of them because the other line is laying on top of it. We're gonna have to replace those lines and we gotta bleed the brakes. So let me see if these lines are available. If not, then it's gonna have to be hard lines. You may be asking, what's the reason for having flex lines? Because this is a frame vehicle and a body is mounted on it with rubber bushings. So the body flexes. If you have a long enough piece of steel line or the copper line that I prefer, it can usually flex fine and you won't have an issue. I've, I've never seen them have an issue. Or you could loop it, too, because that'll act like its own spring. So let me see if they're available, because if they're available, I'm just going to replace them and go from there. All right, so those line sections are not available from the local stores, so I'm going to make line. And like I said, I, I've never, ever, ever in 40 years had an issue with a vehicle like this, like this or a pickup truck where they had flexible type lines and you didn't use a flexible type line, you used a, you know, a metal line. If you have enough length of it, it's automatically, it's springy to begin with. It's not the right way to do it, but you could do it. What I'm gonna wind up doing is taking it and probably run a loop and then over, because the loop acts like a better, or it adds length to it, so you, act, you get more of a spring. And if you ever look at older GM vehicles, they did that, they actually looped the lines to go down to act like a spring. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I know there's going to be people out there say, oh, you can get those lines from this mail order place or that mail order place. Okay, that's great. I, I understand that. I know that. I got to get the guy back on the road. This is how he earns a living. So he needs his truck. So, and I am confident it's going to be a perfectly fine repair. So let me go ahead. We're going to go underneath the hood. We're going to have to, I got to measure this. I got to make sure. I think it's quarter inch line, but I've got to measure it and make sure. So this way I have everything I need. So the next question is, how do you know what size the line is? I mean, I know what size the line is by looking at it because I've been doing this for so many years. A lot of you guys may be like, well, how do you know what size it is? Well, let me show you. It's pretty easy, actually. So here we go. See that? That is, I can't even see, yeah, that's a quarter inch wrench. And it's going to fit tight because this has the plastic sheathing on it. So I just have it on there now. It doesn't want to cooperate and go back on. But that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's, oops, I'm sorry. I went off of it. I didn't realize. There we go. See that? So that's quarter inch line. Because you're going to have three sixteenths quarter, um, Three sixteenths, quarter, and five sixteenths are your possibilities for brake lines. I've never seen three eighths as brake lines. I've seen it for a fuel hose or a fuel line. So, like I said, we're going to have to make something here. So, easiest thing to do is I'm going to take the air box out of the way so it's not bothering me. The power steering reservoir, I might unbolt it so I can tuck it up and out of the way slightly. Or I might actually just unhook it and do that. I've got to see. Uh, i got this water shield here that has to come out. This way I can get to the lines because I'm gonna pro I'm gonna have to reuse those uh, fittings there. I'm gonna have to put them on the new lines, and don't mix up which one goes where. Although this may be a cross style uh, brake system, where one of those circuits feeds left front, right rear, the other circuit feeds right rear, left front, left rear, right front. Yeah, you got it. Um, it might be that type of system. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's just two that go down into the ABS and the ABS splits it up because I'm pretty sure this has an ABS module underneath it. But um, yeah, so let's get something made here. Actually, what I'm going to probably do is I'm probably just going to cut the sections out on the line and um, just go that route instead of just taking them off the master. Well, let me start disassembling some of this and then go from there. I'm not going to show you disassembling you know, an air box and stuff like that, but you, you get the idea. So with the air box out of the way, I gotta get these clips off of here and I gotta keep track of what line is which. I think I'm just gonna cut them here and put unions in place. Do not use compression fittings. Never use compression fittings. I know people say, oh yeah, it'll hold up. No, it's, compression fittings are not good. And I gotta make a video showing you that. But anyway, I gotta get these clips off. I gotta keep the lines in order. I think I might just leave this upper line alone because it actually feels perfect. This one, obviously it had rubbed through on that power steering hose, which I had bent it out of the way. It's very flexible, so it comes back up, but I got it moved as much as possible. Then I just got to move the lines into a better position uh, when I go to do this. So, all right, let me get those clips off and let's go from there. Those clips are a bit of a pain. I wound up having to take a small pocket screwdriver and sticking it in. See that little tang that's sticking up right there? I had to get the screwdriver wedged in there and actually force it in and wiggle it around until eventually it popped. So a little bit of a pain. So now that I have the lines actually free, like I said, this line feels absolutely perfect. So I am I am gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna just I'm gonna fix this one single line. Problem is I gotta burn off this plastic stuff. So let me get my little torch to do that. And also I'm gonna depress the brake pedal so I don't lose all my fluid. So now I'm going to take my handy dandy torch here and I'm going to burn the plastic. This is black stuff is plastic that's on the line there. It's to protect it, to keep it from rotting. However, I cleaned all this down with brake clean. This is our brake clean that we have. I'm sorry. So. Got to be mindful. See how long it burns? You can see it evaporating as it's burning. Now, imagine if I had a puddle of that in here on a fuse box, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the fan on and do this. Now, when I turn the fan on, you are not going to be able to hear me. 
So I'm going to turn a fan on hand, fan blowing just to help aerate this area. You know, just keep, not aerate, but like uh, help keep, you know, the air from standing still because it'll help it and keep it from catching on fire. It won't catch on fire. I'm not concerned about it, but uh, actually here, you can watch me, but you may be hearing the fan quite loud, actually. So just remember, it's this upper line here. So what I want to do is just doing this to burn off the plastic that's on there. I basically want to incinerate it. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it actually melts. Like I said, you got to be very careful. Obviously, you don't want to set the car on fire. And as you can see, the fluid started pouring out because as it's heating up, the fluid's boiling in there, so it's creating pressure. So you got to be careful, too, because this stuff is, the spray fluid is highly, highly flammable. Now that I burned it off, I know somebody's going to complain that, oh, you overheated the line, you're not supposed to do that. I do that to get the majority of it off. Now I'm going to cut the line. I'm going to let it cool off for a minute. So you heard me just say, you know, somebody's going to say, oh, I overheated the line or whatever. The reason I say that and you hear me say that things similar to that, you know, during the course of making a video is because people do say things like that. And it's like, I can't think of everything every single time I'm doing this. If you were doing this, you wouldn't be able to either. Trust me on that. I don't have a script. I don't have a, a whiteboard behind me, you know, for me to read off of. Everything is done as you see it. So... You know, sometimes things go the way I want them to, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have to do things that are a little um, out of the ordinary to make it work. But, you know, it, it's just sometimes you get people that write certain comments and it's just like, you just, like, ah, you get irritated. You get jaded, actually, a little bit. But now that that's cooled off, let me go in there and see what I can do about cutting that line. I have a brake pedal depressor on there because like what happens is you depress the brake pedal and it forces the piston in the master cylinder to go past the, the, the opening where the fluid comes in and it stops the master from draining out. Because that's a big master. There's a lot of fluid in that. I mean, look at the size of this. Hold on a second. Let me unplug this fan. I mean, look at the size of that thing. That thing holds a lot of fluid. So if I op as soon as I open this up, it's just going to start pouring out of there. I want to try to avoid that as much as possible. So let me get a line cutter and let me cut those lines. All right, so here's the little line cutter I have. This one I picked up off the Matt Goat truck. I don't know if it's his own or their own brand or whatever. But do them slow and easy. You don't have to go nuts. The faster or the deeper you make the cut, the more the end actually will, the end of the line will crimp in and restrict the opening, you know, like, like a slightly clogged artery. And plus, if you put a uh, flare tool on there, it makes it difficult to run a flare. So let it do its thing, let it take its time, and cut in there. Sorry if I keep going off of that. I could probably do this much faster, but in doing so, like I said, you push, you squish the end of the line down. I just tightened up on it a little bit more. The nice thing about this tool is it's actually got a spring load in it. And yeah, you can override the spring load, but the spring load keeps like a constant pressure even as it's cutting in. I just turned it again. see what I was talking about at the very end that actually cuts it and like folds it in slightly so it's actually smaller the inside diameter right there is smaller than it's supposed to be all right let me cut the other end off and then let's figure this out so there I cut the line off I actually went down lower 
because I want it to be on a straighter piece, and then I realized up here I'm going to do the same. I'm going to cut it up a little higher. I'm actually going to take the line off, and this way I can flare that much easier. The reason being is with that short of a neck there, sometimes it's hard to have the nut on there and flare it at the same time. It's, it can get quite difficult. So much, I'd rather have a much straighter area to work with. But here, you can see where that line blew through, and that's from rubbing on that power steering line that whole time. So, all right, let me get, like I said, I'm just going to take that line off the master. This way I could do it on the bench, and that's going to be the more difficult one because i got to do it in the vehicle. But, you know, it is what it is. Got to do what you got to do. So I've showed you guys this before. It's a Lyle kit. It's for a 316, uh, yeah, 316 and quarter inch line. 3326. Yeah, I'll put a link up, uh, an Amazon link on the uh, description in the description. This kit is actually really good. I, I like this thing. I wish they made it in different sizes. This is the part that actually holds the line when you go to flare it. I'm trying to do this one hand. It's a pain. Let me get this out. But it works perfectly for flaring. So let me get this apart. And let me show you the different pieces. So there's the holding arbor, and you're going to put your line in there from the opposite side so it comes into here then you use this and this is going to set your depth basically you push the line through and you thread this in and you push this you thread this until it bottoms out once it's tightened in place well not fully tightened but partially tightened you use that this way it'll push the line partially out to get it to the correct height once it's at the correct height then you can clamp down on this i'll show you that in a second so now what we're going to do is we are first and foremost we're going to put a flare nut on the line. Don't forget to put a flare nut on. Make sure you go in the right direction. You don't want to go on this direction because that's backwards. Go in this direction. Now, on this, you got to figure out which is 3 16 and which is quarter. It shows quarter up there. See that? So quarter is going to come through on this side, like this. Now, when this thing is sticking through, thread these down just enough till it touches. So now this thing gets a little bit snug. Go a hair more with your fingers. Now make it so you can thread this in. This is actually making contact with the line there. See it? So now, as you thread this in, it's going to push this end out. Let's see if you can see that. Actually, you know what? Let me mark that so you can actually see it. things I always carry is a sharpie, a pen, and a lighter. See how it pushes it out? There, so now that bottomed out, now you're going to tighten these. Now, I can actually use my little 3 8 gun on that to tighten it. You can do it by hand if you want. I've been using the gun on it, and I've had no issues. Till they bottom out. Now I gotta get that back out. And now it gets tight. Actually, let me move back a little bit. Alright. So now we need this piece. And what this is going to do is this creates the two steps of the flare. There's one for the 3 16 and there's one for the quarter. This is the quarter. So you're going to put this end in first because what it does is it folds it. I don't know if you can see that. It folds the line inward slightly. So this little kit also gives you this little bit of lube here. Basically, all we're going to do is we're going to stick a little bit of this lube in there. I don't know what kind of lube it is. We're going to put this in, and we're going to screw this down till it bottoms out. Same thing, I'm going to use the gun, because on some of these steel lines, it's pretty difficult to work with, or it can be. And the one benefit about having that mark there, too, is I could look at it and see that the line wasn't pushing itself out while the tool was going in place. So now I back that out. And if you look inside there, see how it just folded it over a little bit? So now, we, same thing, a little bit of lube. Reverse the tool to this end. See, 
and stops right there. Tighten it up. You don't have to go bananas. Once it stops, stop. You don't have to go any further. All right. So now, that's not the tool I did before. What did I do with the other? There it is. So now, back this off. Obviously, you got to separate it much larger because you have flare on there. Now, look at that flare. Look how perfect that flare is. This thing does a nice job making flares. Blow this thing out with brake clean before you do it. Now, it's going to be the same thing on the other line in the vehicle. Oops, hold on. Sorry. The problem is I don't have enough room to even get a camera down in there to show you. But it's the same procedure. And then when I make the, the copper line that I'm going to run in between, that's going to be like the springy section because I can't get a flex section. So we're going to do that. And then as I'm going together with it, I'll show you that. I'm not going to show you me flaring everything, but I'll show you that, okay? All right, guys, so here's the finished piece of line that I'm going to put in there. Now, we're going to be using a union. This is a union. Goes in there, and then that nut attaches it. Now, yeah. some people use compression fittings, and I do not have compression fittings. Uh, I, what a compression fitting is, is... You would not put this flare on there. What it is, you would put this, basically it's a nut that slides over this. It's like a, it's a cupped nut. And then you would put this copper sleeve that goes over. And then you would put something similar to this on there and then put the two together. And what happens is as you tighten it up, it crushes that little copper sleeve down onto this tube and it locks it in place. However, that is not safe for brake systems. Brake systems can reach some extremely high pressures when you're slamming on the brakes in an emergency situation. Imagine slamming on the brakes in an emergency situation and, and that line pops right off. That's not a good situation. Oh, excuse me. Um, I have seen it. I have seen it happen. I know of somebody that got sued because that happened. I know of a shop that got sued because it happened. The guy who I, who I knew that got sued, I didn't know him personally. But he did repairs out of his house, and he did a compression fitting on somebody's car. He actually made out a receipt showing that he did that, you know, repaired brake line or whatever. Didn't say he used a compression fitting, whatever. Person lost the brakes because the line blew off. In New York, you can bring people to DMV court. You want to bring a guy to DMV court, you don't want to go to DMV court. That's, that's, they usually are for the consumer more than anything else although I had, I had been brought to DMV court and I won when I had my own shop twice and I won both times if it's a legit complaint they'll they'll hold you to it a compression fitting is not designed for brakes in the warnings for compression fittings I believe it says that New York State any state actually I believe that does state inspections safety inspections I believe it says and I know I know for a fact New York State does because I was a New York State inspector in New York State, it says you cannot have a compression fitting on a brake line. North Carolina has the same thing, as far as I know. I'm not a state inspector here. Mo and Joe both are. Uh, I am not. However, using a union like this, with this kind of an end, it positively locks the line in place. The line cannot be pulled out. You, you, eventually, you could probably put enough pressure through a line to blow the line apart. That'll never come apart. That'll, that's a strong, strong uh, repair. I mean, but the factory uses it too. I mean, where it uh, goes into the master cylinder, it's this style. Where it goes into the wheel cylinders, calipers, brake hose, it's all the same style. There's different versions of this, but whatever. Now, one thing of interest here. See how the line is like folded over itself? That is actually a crush area, and that area, when it crushes together, is like basically like a very, it's got a little bit of a spring to it, but as it crushes together, it creates the seal. You can overcrush these things, and I've seen people do it, and then you, you could wind up with a leak if you overcrush it. Yeah, you got to make it tight, but you can overcrush it. I've seen it to where people have tightened them up, eventually took them apart to do something else, go back to it, 
you know, and put it back together. And now all the crush is gone in the line and now it's never going to seal again. So just something to be mindful of. Um, I can't tell you how to tighten it. It's, it's a feel type of thing. I've never had an issue with myself having them leak after I've done them. Yes, I've had them leak because the flare wasn't any good. You know, I, I made a mistake on a flare and I didn't notice it. But I've never had one leak because I had over crushed it and then did whatever. I have seen it happen though and I've had cars come to me where I've taken stuff apart and then when I went to go tighten them back up, then they leaked because the spring was gone, the crush was gone. So let's get this installed and let's get this thing bled and everything else because I gotta put it up in the air. I, I hate I hate vans with ladder racks, I really do, because you can't put them all the way up in the air. So you gotta scoot around on a seat or whatever. It, it's a little bit of a pain. But all right, let's get this line in place. I am only going to show you part of this because I cannot get a good shot of doing this. So basically, I'm going to take the union and I'm going to thread it onto here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I can't see the camera, so I have no idea. Thread it onto there and then get it close enough to thread this end together, which I don't, like I said, I don't know if you can see this. I'll know when I go to edit the video though. Tell you what, there's nothing worse than going to edit a video and realize you have footage that you cannot use. Why is this? <coughs> See now that. All right, the actual fitting's stuck. That happens sometimes after you flare it. They get stuck because the line technically flex or bends slightly and it gets them stuck. I had taken the power steering reservoir out of the way before. Okay, there it goes. So now that's all together, and that's pretty much what it's going to look like. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave one of those fitting, one of the silver parts loose, probably the top part because it's easier to get to. And I'll, I'll tighten the bottom. I'll tighten these two up, and then I'll take the, the uh, brake pedal depressor off. I might actually even pump it up a few times just to try to get the air up to that point out so I don't have so much air in the system when I go to bleed it at the wheels. So, all right, let's get this done. So when I went in the truck and tried to pump the brakes up, I noticed it had zero pedal like before. And Mo was pumping the daylights out of it to get it to squirt out a little bit. I mean, the pedal is going to the floor. It's still going to the floor now. So what's this? This is my hand vacuum pump. And I have it going through the master and into here. And the reason for this is I'm trying to suck some air out and hopefully get the, get the piston basically uh, primed again because it felt like it wasn't burned, like I had nothing, like I wasn't getting anything. You would think, after even having a line cracked open over here, that you would get something coming through, and I had nothing. So, trying this, and hopefully we'll get something through. It's possible it ruined the master cylinder. I've seen that before, where, you know, master cylinder only has like a little bit of travel, and also you lose a line, now the piston travels even further, it winds up ruining the master. I've seen that happen plenty of times. So it's always a possibility. Now, in case I didn't mention it, having a vacuum pump hooked up and going through this bottle, what it's doing is it's sucking the air out. See the bubbles? That's brake fluid. I let it sit there for a few minutes, and the theory is, hopefully, like I said, it's going to pull the fluid back up through the line. It, it'll, it can actually collapse the pistons and the calipers and the wheel cylinders can get pulled in and stuff like that. But hopefully it'll pull the fluid back up and through. And then when I release the vacuum, what will happen is it'll take from this chamber here and suck it back in. There's enough there's enough of a reservoir here to where I don't have to worry about you know aerating the system again. Um, but I'm trying to do this so hopefully the backside of the piston in there will actually get primed up with fluid. So I'm gonna let this go for a little bit. I'm gonna and like I said I release the pressure and it'll suck down from this. It may actually suck down to the point of pulling air into it air into it but if it does the air is not going to go through the fluid and into the system the air is just going to expand on the top here well if i do that then what i do is i add more fluid to it so i just released the pressure went in there checked the pedal and i got a good pedal actually i'm just doing it one or two more times i might not even have to go down there and hit the bleeders now if you think about it when the line broke up here 
yes, it introduced air in the line. It doesn't take air and force it through the entire system. That does not happen. The fluid pretty much stays right there. It's air in this section from the brake up, not from the brake down. It will not force air through the system, only to the point of the brake. So technically, I didn't have air throughout the system. It was just up here. So it pulling out this little bit of air here should be all I need to do. Because like I said, the pedal actually started to feel pretty darn good. So I'm going to let this go for a couple more minutes, and then we're going to try it and see what happens. So we're all together there. All together there. Brake fluid is full. Yeah. Tighten the shop, I will say that. All right, let me climb in here. That's, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, wow, that pedal feels really good. Alright. Still has a brake light on. I wonder if I gotta reset the module. It's very possible. Let me check. Now before I actually check the module, let me show you something. I'm gonna hold pressure on the brake pedal for a bit. And my reason for doing that is I want to hold pressure on it and I'm going to go out there and I want to run my fingers underneath where those fittings are I want to make sure nothing's leaking because I don't have anybody here to assist me at the moment so this way I can just verify that hey nothing's leaking back under the hood oh, all dry there all dry there perfect the fluids topped off I already checked that all right let's close the hood and let's get the scanner on this thing all right so we got no communication with the ABS module. So, all right, I mean, there, it knows what vehicle it is, but it's not communicating. So I am not gonna get too concerned about it. I'm sure that brake light was probably on, considering it's got a check engine light on and airbag light and everything else. So the pedal feels fine. So let's just take it for a ride and let's see what it does. All right, so I just got back from a road test. Everything's good, the brake, is, brake pedal's beautiful. Um, I didn't go too, too far because the seat belt doesn't buckle. And going down the road and the chime keeps going off, but whatever. So I didn't go too, too far with it, but the brake pedal feels perfect. Of course, the brake light stays on. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, yeah. So that was actually a pretty good repair there. And, um, you know, sometimes you can't, you, you can't get the pieces that you really need right away. And this guy's got to be back on the road. It's kind of an emergency repair. So anyway, that's about it. Hopefully you got something out of that. You learned something. Um, that's about it. All right, guys. If you're getting some of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Hiccups. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.